What's up guys? The Barco Watch Saga continues to rumble on and our favorite first goal scorer reflects on his time as a five strike. All that and more, coming up. Welcome to the show, Five Strike Fam. I'm AJ, this is Tanner McLeod. Before we get into it, become part of the notification squad by hitting the bell next to the subscribe button. First up, today, Atlanta United has announced they will not be capping season tickets for the upcoming 2018 season. Now for me, I'm super excited about this because nothing makes me happier than the idea of selling out Mercedes-Benz Stadium for every game because I know that Atlanta United fans can do that and nothing would make me happier than to turn that place into a cauldron that every team fears to come to. Now, if you think about it, if they open that top part up, that's gonna put them on pace to have level attendance with some of the biggest sides in the world. Now, I mean, you're looking at Bayern Munich, Man United, they average 75,000. We can't get there, that's not how big the stadium is. Right. But you're still looking to average more than say, look, around Madrid, mm -hmm. Schalke, Arsenal. I mean, we see them here and it's just like, that's pretty impressive. I mean, this past season even, what was it? They were top five for attendance and that one weekend when we sold, where we broke the record. Exactly. So it's like, I'm excited. I, I genuinely, I love the idea of just filling that place up every week. But, yeah. you know, there's always pros and cons. So, But what do you, what do you think about it? Yeah, uh, I, I think it's a good thing. I mean, uh, you know, having more uh, fans to be able to, you know, attend the games is absolutely great. They get to experience what we all love about going to Atlanta United games. Uh, I do have a worry is that, uh, you know, if we don't cap it, it might not allow the people that are discovering Atlanta United for the first time to actually be able to experience that. Uh, especially if we get 60, 70,000 people there that are there every single game. Uh, you know, it might become, you know, only those people that are actually into Atlanta United. Yeah, I get that. And I mean, you see that with a lot of European clubs as well. They'll yeah. cap their season tickets. So, say Manchester United Old Trafford on 75,000. Mm -hmm. Well, they might only sell 60,000, and the rest of the 15 will be sold every single game because there's a demand for those tickets. Mm -hmm. So, I don't have a problem, you know, in theory of saying maybe, hey, we cap it at 50,000. Right. But I mean, if you can get 60 and then sell another 10, 11, then it's right. like, I'm cool with that. My thing with season tickets is, especially if the team's winning, then that's mm -hmm. how many people you can expect to show up because they For paid sure. to be there. And yeah. from every season ticket holder I talk to, they're going to almost every match. And if right. not, they're either giving their ticket to someone else or selling it, and it's always selling. Right. So there's the demand for those tickets. And I mean, you see a lot of people who are complaining about being on the wait list. You're like, yeah. I want to get those tickets. And it's incredible that thing. we had a wait list after only one season. Mm -hmm. And... You know, I guess the thing that would scare me is we sell those season tickets and then United struggle and then people don't come. Yeah. So I love the idea of the top half being open, but if it's not even, you know, getting full to fill at all, then it's like, you know, right. maybe we should, you know, cut back on that a little bit. But right. I, 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 I'm excited about it, you know, but yeah. I'm just trying to be optimistic about a season that I have really high hopes for. Next up, Carlos Comona reportedly renews his contract with Atlanta United. A new contract was offered that far exceeded the one that Colo Colo offered. This report was from Az Chile, and it says that he will remain in Atlanta for 2018. What are your thoughts on Carmona staying? I'm very excited about it. It has to happen. You know, I think it provides excellent cover, excellent depth. He's a player that I think I would start every week. We talked about that when yeah. we signed Nagby, how I'd play a 4-3-3 and have him in it. Yeah. He's a player that does the dirty work. He works hard. He gets and he makes those tackles. He cleans up the mess. He's very valuable to the five stripes. And I think getting rid of him now would be a huge mistake. Now, moving forward, we don't know how the team will look at the end of this coming season. Right. Maybe he's a player that we could afford to let go. I personally don't even want him to move after that. Now, I get that he's getting a little bit older, but I still yeah. think he does a job and he does it really well. Yeah, and it's kind of because though uh as we mentioned earlier uh in previous weeks that uh you know he's moving because of his family you know he wants to raise his kid in chile so it's completely understandable we want to, don't want to get in the way Absolutely of that not. but uh you know right now it's not that we're building the team around him in that sense but he is a main cog in the team you know the way he plays allows our more attacking players to you know do their thing so i think you know it's a good thing that he stayed and uh, I think we're a better team for it. More on the ever-growing and ever-increasingly ridiculous Barco transfer saga. Now today, Fox Sports Argentina has reported that Barco is not coming to training because Independiente has also reportedly rejected a new Atlanta United bid. That bid started at $14 million with $3 million in incentives and key a 30% sell-on clause if he was sold before the 2019 season. That is a ridiculous offer. Now, for me, it's not the money that they're offering base. It's that sell-on clause. That's incredible. 
And for the club in their situation to turn that down, because it almost guarantees them money from a sell-on so that they might not get this money now, but they're gonna get a hefty chunk later. So mm -hmm. they're still potentially gonna get that 24 million that they're holding out for, even if they sell him at that rate now. So this, this whole thing is honestly, it's, it's well and truly put the silly in silly season. And I know he's clearly not very happy. And b before Definitely. we even found out that, you know, he wasn't coming to training, there was some other stuff that was reported about how he reacted when he found out the board rejected the offer. Definitely, yeah. He uh, reportedly exploded and uh, was mad at the Independiente board. And he's seeking out a meeting with the, the board and its representatives. And, uh, you know, if I were, you know, Barco's camp, I would be very frustrated as well. I mean, the whole uh, case of it was that he wants a better situation for his family, you know, a better financial situation, and Independiente are taking that away from him. That's, uh, you know, it really, for his camp, for his agent, they're the real losers of this right now. I mean, and I can, I can understand Independiente side of things. Why? They want to get as much money as possible from a hot prospect in world football. Yeah. That makes sense. That's understandable. Mm -hmm. They're not in a great situation economically. They need funds to survive. Yeah. But at the same time, they're talking about buying players to make a run at the Copa Libertadores, yeah. which admittedly, that's going to be really tough to win anyway, yeah. because that's the highest competition in South America. It's, it's the Champions League of South America. Right. So, you know, that's already a bit of a stretch, but... Now they're basically denying a player a chance for a better life. And for a team that's struggling to even pay its players in the first place, it's really hard for me to sympathize with Independiente in this situation. I do feel bad for Barco. Yeah. And, you know, it's just a crazy situation that, that keeps getting crazier. And right. I know it's driving all of us insane. Yeah. But, you know, it's all, we, we've talked about it so much. So honestly, I'm to the point where I'm sick of talking about it. But, you know, it's just the nature of football. And I think as fans... We need to accept that. Yeah. I mean, these transfer sagas are going to drag on. It's, you know, the nature of it. So, you know, if uh, if we don't find out this month, you know, we might move on to a different player, be it a uh, Lucas Rodriguez or, or somebody else. But even if we don't, um, you know, it may be uh, an old friend in Yamil Assad. And that brings us to our last main topic of the show. Yamil Assad gave an interview with Univision stating that he wishes the best for Atlanta. They already have a special place in my heart. And he's happy he got first team soccer. He felt important on the team. And to score the first goal in Atlanta United history also meant a lot to him. But, you know, what does this mean to you that he's kind of said all this? I mean, I guess he's kind of accepted the fact that he's not coming back. You know, yeah. he, he had his his tweets and his Instagram posts about how, you know, last days and everything like that. And yeah. I think it's sad because I think he has a lot of close friends on this team. I think yeah. he, he fit in well. And I think it's, you have to think, he's a young man and he thought he had found a second home. And it's it's tough for him to have to go back to a right. situation which, you know, isn't ideal for him. Where yeah. he's playing at a club the where the him. fans love his dad but hate him. Uh -huh. And, you know, he's had some interesting behavior on Twitter and everything. But for me, uh -huh. you know, part of me feels really bad. But, you know, it is a business, and, you know, he says as much. Yeah. And to break up Yamito, uh, Yamil and Tito, that's, uh, that's a sad thing. They're, like, the best of friends on the field and off the field, so that chemistry uh, might be gone a little bit, too. And Yamil Assad had this to say about Atlanta United and their front office. He said that the leadership looks out for the best for the club, and they think that the best thing to do today is to find an alternative call it Barco or whatever, and even if one agrees or disagrees, that is respected. I think that speaks volumes. It's He's not happy. Yeah. That's a, I think he's pretty bummed out. It's a sad Assad, and it's a sad Atlanta United fan base as well that uh, really grew to, to love this guy. I mean, I think he's... I mean, he again, you know, he's he recognizes the love that he's got from the fans, and you know, part of me it does hurt to see you know him break up that you know that partnership with with mm -hmm. Bajalva, and you know, for me though, I think you know he kind of says it whether that's Barco or whatever. Yeah. I go hard for Assad if United can't yeah. sign Barco. I mean, Absolutely. for me, it's like that'd be my first order of business because you know what you're getting with him. Mm -hmm. And that's that you can't say enough about that because yeah. sometimes you can buy a player and it not pan out at all. I mean, sure. it happens all the time where you think you have a sure thing and it doesn't go well. Right. I mean, see Fernando Torres at Chelsea. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> so, I mean, you sure. have all these examples, but like, 
I think he's a player that United would be silly to not go back and come for, and I think he would immediately, even though he might have some hard feelings right now, yeah. if that opportunity arose, I think he'd immediately jump on board with that. Um, and again, as we said, there's no love lost between him and the Les fans. So, yeah. you know, I'd love to see him come back if that's an option. Um, I feel bad for the guy. I mean, he's such a likable guy. He's such a Absolutely. nice guy. You know, he, he always seems to be, you know, interacting with the fans and very right. genuine with the fans. And right. he's a player that's loved. And, you know, it's unfortunate, but such is the business of football. Exactly. And, you know, uh, the Les fans, why apparently they dislike him might be that, you know, his wages are a bit high and he's not a starter on the team. And, you know, for us, I mean, you know... Uh, <laughs> For us to get him, it's reported about two million. Uh, we would have to pay a little bit of some DP fees, maybe, and some allocation money to uh, get him on the team. This might be a different thing where uh, Atlanta United just don't, you know, they can't justify it at the moment unless they're pushed to the point where they need to. And that actually perfectly brings us into our question of the day: If both are available and United could get them, who would you rather have, Emil Assad or Ezekiel Barco? Hit us up in the comments or on Twitter with the hashtag 5 Stripe Weekly. Also for some housekeeping, MLS is going to release the 2018 schedule for Atlanta United and other teams. And we'll find out Thursday, January 4th. And we'll dig into it in depth next week on the show. If you haven't checked out our top five series yet, you can watch them all on our channel now. That's it for us today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to smash a like, subscribe if you haven't, and for Tanner McLeod, I'm AJ. See you guys. Hey!